Hello, everybody, and welcome back to an emergency broadcast, an emergency podcast, if you like. Oxford United's League One position is hanging on by a thread. It is no wins in the last 10 games, nine defeats, only one draw in that time. So one point from 30. It is as bad as I can ever remember it. Probably you have to go back to that season where we got relegated from League Two into the conference, as much as I don't want to think about that. So, Oxford needs some hope. Oxford need to find some hope. And have they found some hope with the new manager that they've brought on board? I want to see a little bit like Liam Manning going out, much like Luke Skywalker did, putting a knee on a rock, looking out over the two suns of moons of Tatooine, and giving Oxford United fans that sense of a new hope. Joining me on this emergency broadcast is, I can only can say, an Oxford United qu quanisseur. Qu quanisseur. Robert, how are you doing? Not bad. I'm frantically thinking of Star Wars gags. So if you could talk for the next 20 minutes whilst I think of some really killer Star Wars gags, that would be great. I have a really bad feeling about this. It's time to draw a line in the sand. And the only thing Oxford United can do now is look forward to these final 10 games. It's 10 games to save our season. It's 10 games to stay up. Oxford United have brought in a new manager who takes charge. It will either be, if I bring this video out today, on Sunday, it will be tomorrow. If I bring it out on Monday, it will be today. But Liam Manning is the new boss. He will be in charge for at least these final 10 games of the season. Who knows after that? And... It's been an interesting appointment process by the board. There's been how many names have been thrown around. Every day there seemed to be a new favourite for the job. Everybody kind of had their own fav favourites of who it wanted to be. And there was some a lot there are some people that have been underwhelmed by this appointment. But Robert, how do you feel about Liam Man Liam Manning being the new manager? Liam Manning wasn't someone who I knew an awful lot about probably 72 hours ago. Of all the names that are being listed, I mean, you had um, Appleton who's been linked, you had um, uh, Grant McCann, you had the beast from Bogger Road who was actually being favoured from one of the jobs. And I really hope you get a picture of him up there for that one. That's Nathan Jones, um, for those <laughs> people who were not familiar with Attitude Era WWE. WWF, sorry. It was WWE then. Um, suddenly Liam Manning was becoming the overrun favourite to take the job. And to be honest, I'm quite happy about it. I can understand people being a little bit hesitant about it. If you look at his track record, and I am just flicking through Wikipedia whilst saying this, it's thin. There's no real way to say about it. The only club that you would say is was Milton Keynes Dons was his only real sort of notable club he was. And he had some success there before the wheels came off a bit this season. But I feel that he's a young manager. He's got, he's, he did a good job at Milton Keynes Dons. He sort of assembled some good teams there. I mean, they were an absolute bastard for us to play against in the last few seasons, which is always a good sign. And um, I sort of feel like he could be a good promising manager for the future. Whether or not, we, we need a manager to come in now and give us the cliched managerial bounce the sort of Sam Allardyce, like four or five wins on the spin that sort of stables, stables the ship, well, it's not stable, steadies the ship even, and um, uh, gets, you know, and sort of keeps you up. And But I sort of think he could be someone like Robinson, like um, Appleton, who took their time to sort of settle in, to sort of get their ideas across to the players. Sadly, we've only got 10 games that to happen. Um, I would say, though, even if the worst comes to the worst and we do get relegated, I would like us to keep him because I think he could be a manager who could actually take us forward. So I, I do have high hopes for him. Uh, yeah, you said the word relegated and automatically my ears just went, la, 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 la. No, this isn't happening. We're going to be fine. Um, I, look, I, I agree with what you're saying there. And I, I've been looking at that possibility too, of thinking like, is it, it what can he do? The positives of him, if if the worst comes to the worst, and thinking of can he rebuild in League Two, and I think he can, or can he le rebuild in League One, and I think he can do that as well. I'm I'm quite happy with the appointment as well. Um, it, it's it, again, I probably wouldn't have had him as the first pick, 
on the list, but I, I can definitely see more of the positives. There's been some like people are cynical. And um, that's including us as well at times. And there's been stuff going around of just saying, well, he's the cheap choice. Uh, do you think like that's the reason the board have gone for Manning or do you, do you think it's more more than that? I'm not. I don't think so. No, I think I saw a lot of the people saying like he's a um, PowerPoint manager. You know, he shows sort of a good PowerPoint presentation and wows people and all the rest of it. And I'm. How do they know that? How do they know that? That that is just complete bollocks, isn't it? That anybody would know that. It's also kind of sort of built into this tactical sort of like people who don't who like things to be simplistic. You know, they like the manager to do like the old. He shows up, writes his team pack, you know, team uh, sheet on the back of a fag packet, chucks it across, you know, and goes, "We're going to have the big man up front and loose balls over him as well." I people seem to be very suspicious of like um, you see it in the media of like people who are sort of like always using tactics there or we know he's, he's he's bringing experts in here now you know you're thinking they, they, they when they don't seem to rely on like perceived wisdom or sort of like what you know the group think would be when they try to sort of be a little bit more individual individual oh, i can't even say when they try to be more of their own man they sort of seem to sort of stick you know that sort of seems to go against them well i think also as well as that thing of um people always want an antidote to what's gone before yeah. Uh, and like, for example, and we'll go back like when we had Atkins and we were quite turgid, turgid and sluggish, people wanted to someone to come in and be a bit more expansive. That didn't work out well. Um, like now with Robinson, where you've had a manager who was um, very much wanting to play attractive football, concentrated more on scoring goals rather than, you know, being defensive minded. And people kind of want an antidote to that, someone to come in, shut up shop, grind out a load of one nils and Oxford get their way out of trouble like that. I don't think we've got the players to do that. And I think even if you bought in a manager that wanted to be like five at the back, part the bus, play this low block and snuff out games. I don't think we're good enough to, to do that. And I don't think we've got the defensive capability, particularly in midfield, to be able to play that sort of game. So I think that the board have gone with a manager that can kind of take the strengths of the squad and and try and emphasise it and bring that out. And and that's why I think they've gone with a guy like Manning, a guy who's who is constant going to concentrate on playing a more ex, a, an expansive game, a possession based game, and a game where Oxford United will be more on the front foot in games. Because I think that's going ultimately going to be the best chance of us have got of winning football matches. There's two things I wanted to say about that. It's like the first is going back to your point about him being the cheap choice. Why do people seem to think the board are being like that? I mean, I know, I know his last 10 games under Robinson, things have become very toxic at the club and there's a lot of sort of bad feeling going around and understandably so. But this is still the same board that are trying to frantically to get us a new stadium, which we need. Why are they suddenly people who want to do it on the cheap why do they suddenly want they don't want to sort of get, spend the money and get the decent manager in you know why do they want to try you know why do they why are they going to go for the cheap option that doesn't make any sense to me and it wasn't like i know you don't want to go over too much old grounds about robinson but it wasn't like money hasn't been spent this year yeah. it wasn't sort of like they sort of turned around at the start of the season and said the budgets have all been slashed money was spent it wasn't spent well but I don't think that's necessarily sort of like the same thing as saying they they're lacking in ambition. And you can sort of, and by the and going on to your sec, the second point you made about um, uh, the team, you're right. We we don't have the players to go five three two now and be in like an Ian Atkins type team. We we just can't do it. And our biggest strengths, I think, we are a side. We still have some good players in that team at the moment. Confidence is absolutely shot, but there are still some decent players in there. And if they can come in and they can get the big if, a couple of wins, and suddenly a bit of belief comes in them, we might be able to get the results we need to actually stay up. And it may be playing to player strength for being more attacking than trying to say, everyone, right, everyone, it's going to be everyone parking the bus in front of the goal and we're going to try and grind, you know, nick a win. We haven't got the players to do that anyway. Oh, I agree. Well, yeah, that's, that's absolutely what I agree. But just quickly... Name one player, Robert. Name one player we've spent money on this year. Name one high-profile signing. How dare you say that there's been we've wasted money and thrown it around? Name one. 
I mean, I'm struggling to name a name of any player who allegedly was spending the weekend on the piss in New London when the team were playing up at, New, you know, at Wembley. Uh, but other than that, I have no idea. Um, yeah. Um, allegedly, we, allegedly, we, allegedly. You know, well done. Well done to avoid any legal ramifications there. Allegedly. The yes. Name <laughs> the player. So, um, yeah. So let, let's just quickly, before we get into what I think are Liam Manning's pros and cons, do you want to quickly just sort of run over his managerial history uh, from what you've uh, s- from what from the from the hours of textbooks you've no doubt looked through two over seconds. the last twenty four hours. It's just gone off two sets, two sets, two sets. Right, here we go. Yeah. Why of course. <laughs> uh, yeah. His playing career was pretty much not very much. He sort of he was at Norwich, he joined Ipswich and then he was at least about two thousand five and then spent his time sort of going around the non leagues. He played for a bunch of sides who frankly Bishop oh. Stortford, Long Melford, you know. Well, I mean, if, if he's in management and he's been in management for a few years now yeah. and he's Oxford's manager at 37, which absolutely makes me feel like I want to get my pension out, um, then obviously he didn't have a great playing career. So no, he you, went to Iceland and spent some time over there. But his strength could be that he went to go become an academy coach at Ipswich and then went to become the West Ham under 23 coach in 2015. He then went to go and join the New York um, FC in 2019. And then he moved to a Belgium side, uh, Lommel SK. Mm-hmm. And uh, he did all right. And then was moved over to um, MK Dons in 2021. And side note, what the hell must the MK Dons fans must have been saying in like, August 2021? Well, yeah, I mean, they probably were saying that, but we've seen other Cubs, namely Ipswich, and namely Pompey as well. Pompey have taken Messinio, who's yeah. been, give, I've given a punt to him, and and um, Western McKenna coming into Ipswich was a bit of an unknown force, yeah, and they yeah. gave a, gave a chance to him. So, um, I think in many ways, just going back to another thing, I think the board would have been happy with Manning is when he came into MK Dons, he kind of took a Russell Martin side that were very good at keeping the ball and playing possession, but didn't really do much with it, were quite toothless for a lot of the possession they had. And emphasize, and, and taking that a step further and making them more dynamic and making them better. And I think that's another thing of what the board will be hopeful he can do with a Robinson side, which again, likes to keep the ball, likes to keep possession, but for large periods of the game, don't do a lot with it. I can see a little bit of similarities in a way between Robinson and um, Manning in a way. Robinson sides at his best were very attacking and very adventurous sides to watch and without wanting to tread on our ground things just went wrong for a variety of reasons we will probably know the full stories whatever happened it things did not go wrong and it's the same with him at Milton Keynes Dons they got promoted no, no they didn't get promoted they were sort of challenging for promotion and then things went wrong for them this season and that just happens sometimes at clubs for whatever reason Man, maybe the manager's shelf life is uh, limited, in which case you need like a, a, you know, a change someone needs to be bringing as well. Doesn't necessarily mean that Robinson's a bad manager. He just had need, maybe needed a new challenge. Likewise, Manning's probably not a bad manager. It's just the time ran out at Milton Keynes Don, and he needed to move on to the next thing. But he's still that season with MK Don's last season. They got they finished on eighty nine points. Yeah, uh, they oh. came third in the league, a point behind Rotherham. Um, if they'd have beaten I me mean, that that game, they lost to us one nil at the Kassam. If they'd have won that one, they'd have gone up uh, as automatic promotion. Uh, and and they 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 scored seventy eight goals. They conceded forty four. So you know they scored a few less than Oxford, but conceded a lot less than Oxford. So it's um it, you can definitely see why he's bought in and then there was a huge turnover of players of mk dons and they notably lost some key loan players and sold two of their best players in scott twine and harry darling which are always going to be difficult to replace and they just you know haven't been able to turn haven't been able to replicate the form as what they had last season which is what you've just said um so while he doesn't have a a long CV in terms of management, in terms of like what you can draw back on. I still think from the sample size of what he's done, I think you should be encouraged for what he's done in a short space of time. 
I know, I mean, you can look at someone, say, like Michael Appleton, and I know a lot of fans want him to come back. I was less keen because I think, like, you should never go back. You know, it's very rare that you can ever sort of emulate the success you had the first time round at the club. That very rarely happens. But I would have been perfectly happy with Grant McCann. I think he's a um, very good manager, and I think he would have been a perfectly sell- sensible, solid choice for him. I would have been happy with Nathan Jones to, to a degree because I think he's... A controversial player at times, but I feel like um, he has had some success with um, with Luton. I, I would have been. I think McCann would have been my first choice yeah. out of those names that came around. I mean, some of those names that went in, I've wondered. I just can't imagine we would have got like a Mark Warburton or a Nathan no. Jones. I don't even think Wilder was really in the question. Oh I God, think, Wilder's I, I think Wilder back. thinks he's a bit above Oxford United now, and I don't think he'd come back. So let's jump on now and let's look at actually like what he's going to bring to the job, uh, and let's just focus really on on what he can really do short term because that's really what we're all bothered about is these next ten games. What uh, what pros? Let's start with the pros. What pros do you see Liam Manning bringing um, in terms of like um, a playing style, a mentality to the players on the pitch? And not so much in playing style, but like I say, you, you sort of um, summed up his playing style quite well earlier. I sort of think his main strength of what he's going to bring is he's a fresh voice, effectively. He's coming into the club. He's, he's bringing Chris Hogg as his assistant manager with him as well. So it's his two new voices are going to be coming into the club as well. And it's going to be a shake-up for the players, you know, sort of like um, the, for whatever reason, for all the... For a long time, we've been having them sort of talk the talk in the um, build-up to match. He said, we've had a good week, we've been bonded, we've all worked together, we're all piling high, you know, come brothers, we're all going to unite and stand together. And it never works. We kind of feel like saying, we need these new fresh voices are going to come in there. And they are going to, they're going to have a fresh pair of eyes. They're going to be looking at players and maybe players who are sort of haven't been sort of given a chance, might be given a chance. Players who maybe sort of feels a bit sort of dejected and not sort of like utilised or maybe sort of feel a bit sort of... Um, slighted maybe sort of feel like might be a bit more motivated so that's my main sort of take on him is his freshness and the fact i see him not as a completely different type of manager to robinson in the sense that he might be able to get where some of these players have been performing previously and now lacking he might be able to sort of get them back up to the level they were at before well i think you've kind of summed up the off the field kind of stuff he'll have in terms of the mentality around the change room but i will just focus on some of the pros on the on the pitch because i do think that he has got a style that should relate well to these oxford united players he likes to play a possession game it is a, it's a possession game where we try and control the ball for large periods but it's also possession with a purpose it does involve players being comfortable on the ball all over the pitch and it's about trying to create overloads, little passing triangles and moving through the, th- the thirds, trying to create situations where you're three on two against a player, two on one against a player, which ultimately drags oppositions out of position to create space for other people. It's designed to try for sp- specifically to break down teams that play a mid block or a low block against you, which Oxford have struggled at. When we have gone down in games, we've often struggled to create chances. So I think that should help Oxford United out a lot. And it's also about being creative as well, not just doing the same plan, not just getting the ball and knocking it long, not just playing out to one winger. It's about trying to do different things. It's about trying to the asking the players to be a bit inventive and create um, being adaptable and being unpredictable. He plays with a lot of width, which I think is something that I think you will see that come in. It is a genuine whip to the team. And I think you'll see Oxford trying to attack down the flanks and trying to get more crosses into the box and trying to like create chances that way. And generally, it's also built around aggressive pressing out of possession, which is something that was there when Oxford were at their best under Carl Robinson. We were a very good pressing side and we often would win the ball back high against the opposition. So if he can bring that in, it is going to be very good. But obviously, it it has been known as being a very risky strategy. Um, again, it's not something that should be alien to the players, but it should. it is a risky strategy because it relies on everybody being comfortable on the ball. And that includes the goalkeeper being able to play out from the back and pass out from the back. So that in itself is inherently risky. Just look back at the two wins we had against MK Dons last season and you can see where the flaws could be in that one. Centre-backs play high. 
that's part of it as well to try and pen a side in, which means you could be susceptible on the break. And also players need to be very fit in order to do that. You did see that when we, again, going back to the games Oxford had against MK Dons last season, first half were very much dictated by MK Dons. Second half, when the players tired a little bit, Oxford came more into it and tried to get more control into the game. So with a with this style, there is going to be obviously risks. It's going to be attached with any style. Um, but again, I will say that I do think Oxford have got the players to be able to do this. We haven't got necessarily bad players. I think the thing the trouble is now people are think you know turned on them. I think there's just been sort of like I don't know whether this we again without sort of going on what problems we've had this season. I just think this season just hasn't been successful for one reason or the other. I still think we've got players in the side who are potentially very decent players. And it's just hopefully he can now actually try and get them in a formation and to utilise that properly. Yeah, I think, again, just going back to the players we've got, I think you've seen an improvement in the likes of like Marcus Brown, for example, in the last couple of games. I think he'll be a player that will suit this style very well. I think it will suit like a Javan Anderson. I think it will suit a Brandon Fleming. Um, and I think you'll also see it, you know, hopefully it will be a situation where we can get more bodies into the box, um, which should encourage the likes of Odonka, Tyler Smith, um, Kyle Joseph, for example. So, and that's, that's got to be something that encourages Oxford fans that we're going to have a genuine effort to try and score more goals. A potential con, though. Um, we still keep in some of the coaches that we had under Robinson. Craig Short still going to be in the club. And I'm just checking the other names here as well. Um, Liam Blackmore, Such and Wayne Brown will also still be. I think Brown's the goalkeeping coach, isn't he? Yeah. So, so, yeah, so they're still going to be in the club as well. What are your feelings on that one? Because is this, uh, is this, because the last two games under Short, there has been, the, the results haven't been good, but there's, I think we've all said that there's been a slight improvement in the play. I guess it couldn't have been a whole overhaul. I guess you yeah. had to keep some remnants of what was there before. And um, I think Craig Short has, he's done okay. He's bought like a, he, he's kind of, he's done all right in these two games. He's given like what he could to the players and you have seen an improvement, but I think that, I think that you will see him just sort of settle back into that kind of like number two role. If you're going to be very negative, bit of a yes man kind of role um, until the end of the season. And I do just think it will be very much just what Liam Manning wants. Liam Manning will get. And I wouldn't be surprised if you see a, a changeover of the whole backroom staff at the end of the season. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, that's perfectly sensible in a way. I mean, you're thinking you've got to have some continuity. I mean, just to sort of turn up on Monday and there'd be like four new coaches in there as well. It takes time for people to settle in, you know, at least Craig Short. I mean, you know, he knows the players. They are familiar with him as well. And maybe in like 10 days time, it's felt like, OK, we'll all part our ways and then we'll all sort of move on. And then he'll get more coaching staff that suits him. But I think it's perfectly logical to keep these players in, these coaches in at the moment. Yeah. Um, and I don't think that that'll I don't think he's the sort of guy that's going to hinder anything or, 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 or like spit the dummy out if it's a different tactics to what he said. It sounded like the relationship under Robinson was very much like Craig Short will give his recommendations and Robinson will ignore them anyway. So uh, <laughs> it might just be the same. Oh, thing. You need to get a defensive midfielder. You're right. I'll buy a winger. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, you're right. Let's turn our most attacking player into a holding midfield player. <laughs> um, look, and also just to say it's important to say I, I am interested to know your comments out there as well and your thoughts on this and your thoughts on the proposed strengths and weaknesses of what's going to happen with Liam Manning in charge and what we're going to do before we are going to end this by doing predictions but before this we're just going to have a look at um, what we would do in terms of a formation for the next game in particular and what we think Liam Manning is going to actually do. So let's start by... I find we're idiots, so... Yeah, let, let's start by our... Um, well, I can't even say... I can't even say layman's team. This is like as uh, rudimentary and basic as, as as it gets, and that kind of sums us up pretty well, I would say, Robert. Let me I just think we did well it. to get 11 players on the pitch, yeah. I think we did well. well I did have to double-check. Um, <laughs> so... I've put these up on the screen. What you what you've suggested of what you would like to see, you've gone for sort of a four five one formation um, with Eastwood Brown, Moore, Finley, and Long in midfield. Marcus Brown, 
on the wing, Tyler Goodrum on the other wing, Brannigan, Bate and Ocean Smith with Kyle Joseph up front on his own. Do you want to just say why you think that would be? Um, it's sort of hard to say. And actually, I think since we did these lists last night, I've just read that Lewis Bate might need hand surgery. So sure, that's... I, I saw that too. But let's just assume he is going to play. And... We can run around with one hand. Talking to that, you know. Goalkeeper, is he? Yeah, exactly. Strap the damn thing up and run. God's sake, mate. Anyway, um, I would just say Smith, uh, uh, Ocean Smith, he seemed to play well. A lot of people were talking about yesterday. It's like he came on and sort of like um, he hasn't been used all season for one reason or another. And he looked quite promising when he came on. And he's a bit, he's an unknown quantity at the moment. And also I was going 4-5-1 because I was thinking this is a way of, our biggest problem is that we are shipping in a lot of goals at the moment. So this is a way of just trying to keep maybe t- keep things a bit tighter than it needs to be. But then there's still plenty of options for players to bomb on forward and join up with um, the striker up front and when our wingers can put some crosses in. So that was my real thinking about it. It's like we got the, the players we got at the moment are out of form and low in confidence. And I sort of thought this might be a way to just try and grind out some results and maybe boost that confidence up a bit. That's probably not some bad thinking. I, I've gone for even. I've gone for such rudimentary tactics. You you just couldn't even make it up, really. I've gone for this is what I would do. I would strip it right back to basics and play four four two. I would go with Eastwood in goal. I'd go with Brown left back, Finley and Moore, Finley and Moore as centre backs, um, and Sam Long as right back. I'd go with Marcus Brown and Goodrum on the wing. I'd go with Brannigan and McGuane in midfield. I just don't think Ty, um, Lewis Bates has been that great in the last few games. So I'd like to see McGuane come back into the side. And um, I'd say Kyle Joseph and Gatling Odonka up front as a, up, as a duo. I, I just think we need to play two strikers. I want to see two people up there. I want to see this. And, and I think every, every footballer should be able to play 4-4-2. It keeps it simple. Everybody should know their roles. It gets natural width in the side. And you've also got two, when you get crosses in, you've got two people going for it rather than one. That's just keeping it simple. But yeah, sometimes, though, there's something to be said from that. Football is a game that's often ridiculously overcomplicated. And sometimes the simple solutions, you know, it's Occam's razor. You know, the simplest solutions often are the correct one. Oh, I like that one. That's good. That's I know. Good. Highbrow. Didn't, didn't expect to see that highbrow. We are let's educated. See, let's see if people. you can work a Schrodinger's cat reference in there somewhere as well. <laughs> um, so let's, but let's. That's what we would do. Um, and and I think you're all jumping up and down and thankful that we're not given the managerial role of Oxford United. Right, grateful. Um, but I, but I, I played that scenario through on Football Manager, and I can say that I won one out of twenty games with that formation. Um, so there you go. Rolling it forward, this is what you think that Liam Manning will p- do. And you've gone with pretty much sticking with what we've got. You've gone with 4 3 3, Eastwood, Brown, Moore, Finley, and Long. Lewis Bate holding behind Brannigan and McGuane. Anderson on the, on, the, um, right ha- uh, on the right hand side. Marcus Brown on the left. And Kyle Joseph up top. So not a huge departure from what we had on the field. Um, against uh derby no i don't i kind of sort of feel like um again i am not i will make uh, ignorance i've I, you know i was basically having to look up what liam manning did in terms of sort of tactics and obviously he tends to sort of like um i sort of felt like saying that sort of like looked like a team as i could sort of see him playing and he's also like a bit of continuity as well you know this is a team that started off last time he's, he's only going to have about four or five days with these players anyway so it's going to be an element of like what you know it's not trying to change everything too radically or anything like this at the moment let's sort of try and do what we're doing and just try and do it better i i have gone with i've looked at his style over mk dons and i've gone with a formation that he used to play with mk dons and i just and the reason why i've done it and i'll just name the side i've gone with sort of like a three four two one um, Eastwood obviously in goal, three centre backs of Brown, Moore, and Long. So I, I found a way to get Stuart Finley out of this. I feel bad for him. He's had a couple of bad games, but he, he's just not looked good. Um, Brandon Fleming comes back into the side as the left wing back. Javan Anderson plays as the right wing back. Cameron Brannigan um, in the midfield with Marcus McGuane. 
up up behind Kyle Joseph up front and in behind him you've got Marcus Brown and I've gone for Lewis Bate if he plays if not probably Wildshot um, in behind um, that area the reason I've gone for that is I think that we've got two kind of natural wing backs in the side in Brandon yeah. Fleming and in Javan Anderson and I think he will want to play those two as often as he can to give Oxford that natural whip I think that Marcus Brown will enjoy that free roll where he's where he'll get on the ball as much as he can and try and dictate play. I think Lewis Bate or Yannick will enjoy that too. And it also gives a license for those two to get forward into the box. And it gives Brannigan and McGuane a chance to get on the ball and dictate things as well, rather than just sitting back and blocking the back yeah. four, the back three. Um, you've You've got three centre-backs in there, which should give you a bit of defensive solidity as much yeah. as we can do. But... I think that he is going to look more towards how we're going to score goals rather than how we're going to keep them out. Yeah, which is what we need to do, really. We are not scoring any goals. I mean, how, you know, amazingly, we got two in this last match. And I'm kind of thinking that's... You look at our goal-scoring records over the last sort of, well, all this season. It's pitiful, really. Yeah, I mean, and the encouraging one was Kyle Joseph runs clean through, Kyle Joseph smacks the ball into the bottom corner. I'm just hoping that all of a sudden that brings the, oh, yes, I know where the goal is mentality back for Joseph. And we have a little bit of a run of form for him till the end of the season. Yeah. And also a set piece goal as well, which is sort of like, um, you know, being like rare as hen's teeth and all these things. But, you know, sort of like a benefit, you know. Every goal has been rare as hen's teeth. But yeah. Um, and I think that James Henry probably would have played yeah, in that, was that bad. That role was behind bad. the striker if he would have been fit, but he has. But obviously, I don't think you're going to see Henry again this season. Um, and then you've got, uh, but then depending on who's fit, you do have still options on the bench. You you know you don't. Canate might be back. Tyler Smith might be back. The man who shall not be named might be back. Um, and, and you've obviously got Gatling Odonka as well. So. You do have you do have some attacking options to come on and influence this game too. Yeah, I mean, also got. I'm not sure what's happening like Billy Bowden as well because he's still. You, that's the thing, isn't it? You forget, you forget about, about him. About, you do sort of forget about these players, but you know, sort of like you know, again, someone who was excellent last season but had a very poor season this time round. Maybe new manager might sort of bring out the best out of him. But um, yeah, I know it's it's. You do sort of wonder where we're going to go. Let's, you know, jump in the head and say we do survive. It, next pre-season will be very interesting to see what do we do. But because like some like player who will not be named will sign on the contract. He's our player. Stuart well, Finch. Yeah, I, I yeah, mean, it's not the great season. He's our player. You know, we're stuck them. But this is like kind of why... You sh you can't just completely write these guys off as saying, oh, they're crap and they're the worst signings ever because we are going to probably need them again next season. And you never know. Liam Manning might be able to bring out what everything, what Carl Robinson was hoping to bring out of them and, and, yeah. and might be able to, And at the end of the day, we're giving Josh Murphy a lot of stick and he and, and it, he's, he's had a ridiculous amount of injuries this season and he hasn't been anything like the player that we thought we were going to sign. But... At the end of the day, if he's fit and if he's motivated, he is still a good player at this level. There was that match when he first came back from fitness and he set oh. up a goal for Bowden. And he cut down in, he fired a good cross, good finish by Bowden, and you're thinking, oh, right, well, if we're going to be seeing some of that on a regular basis, we're going to be fine. You know, we've got a good player there. And then it was never seen again. And you never, look, and you've got a new manager now, and you're going to say, Matty Taylor might come back in the summer. Yeah, I and, and all of a sudden they might say, right, we'll give him another year extension, so he's not like going to be and 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 kind of like all is forgiven. We go again with him. Uh, um, so, and I do think that if you play Taylor up front in a two, I think you're going to still see a Matty Taylor that's more than capable of scoring goals. You got to play to his strengths. Matty Taylor by himself is just basically going to be someone who wins you free kicks and sort of might get a, you know get lucky with like the shot four three in the box. If you've got someone up there doing the donkey work for him as well, he should be better. We're going to end this with predictions and we're going to predict what we think is going to happen for all 10 of these games. And we're going to start with next weekend's what some are saying as um, 
what are they saying? They're almost like kind of, it's almost like saying, it's almost like it's the last game of the season and winner stays up, loser goes down. But Morecambe away, what do you think is going to be the score? I'm going to be positive for once. I'm going to say 2-0 to Oxford. Okay. Unbelievably, I'm going to say, I'm going to think it's going to be a 1-1 draw. There's just something about Morecambe. We just yeah. don't seem to beat them. And I wouldn't be surprised if we go down to a goal and then we score one and it's a 1-1 one, one draw and everybody's kind of um, doom and gloom. Yeah. Cheltenham at home. I reckon that could be a 1-1 one, one draw. See, we've gone reverse on this. That's where I think Oxford will get the win. I think Oxford will win that one. I think it'll be a three. I think that'll be probably quite a high scoring game. I think you'll see Oxford win that um, 3-1 or 3-2. Next, next, 1st of April, Peterborough away. I'll go a draw, nil nil one one. I think we'll lose that game. Um, that is going to be, I think that'll be a 2-1 defeat for Oxford in that one. Okay. Um, so next game is Good Friday, live on Sky, Sheffield Wednesday at home. We'll lose that 3 now. I think we'll get a point in that one. Um, that's I don't know why. It's got a little funny thing against Wednesday. I think we match up quite well against them. I think that will either be... Uh, I think that will be a 1-1 one, one draw. OK. Um, Easter Monday. Port Vale away. No Matty Taylor. Jack Stevens been dropped anyway. Yeah, that's odd. Um, I... Yeah. I'm going to say, I'm going to go for a defeat for that one. I reckon we're going to lose that 1 0. I think we'll win that game. I think Oxford will go there and they'll put on um, a decent performance. And I think, we, I think we'll actually win that game 2 0. Okay. Bolton Wanderers at home. I reckon we'll lose that one. I reckon we'll lose that 2 0. I think we'll lose that one as well. Similar to what we saw last season, I think that will be a um, 3 2 defeat. Mm hmm. Portsmouth at home. Again, I'm being negative, but we do not play well against Portsmouth. But then again, Manning might get something better out of him. Under Robinson, last, we, did, we, did, we, we, we did beat them. Um, we got a draw against them away. We did beat them at home last season. We've only I'm going to go with a draw. What, I, I think we'll win it. I think we'll win that game. I think that, that I, I, I think that Moose will deliberately throw it, so we'll win it. Um, <laughs> And I, no, I don't know why. I just think Oxford will. I, I just said a rudimentary score, two one. But yeah. I think Oxford will win that one. Yeah. Okay. One that I don't know whether I'm going to go to or not because I'm petrified of it. Barnsley away. I'm going to go with a draw. I think Oxford are going to get battered in that game. I think that will be a three nil defeat. Yeah. Um, I just think they're a side that are going to be too way too powerful for us, and we're just going to be that. That will be a game where all the passing out from the back is just absolute <laughs> shot to shit. It's um, not what you said earlier about you know, you know, we, you know, we play a high line. You're thinking, oh god, Finley and Moore, high line, Jesus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, oh crikey, um, <laughs> that would be <laughs> just like. He's spinning the ball on his finger. <laughs> just take it. Um, but you can just see Eastwood in tears before the start of the match. Going, no. Or, or, or just literally Liam Manning just going to um, Michael Duff at the start of the game and just saying, um, we're not going to come. We'll just say you win 3-0. <laughs> Is that all right? Yeah, perfect. Um, 29th, last two games of the season, 29th of April, Forest Green Rovers away. I reckon we win that. I reckon we win that. I that I mean, they are almost certainly going to be relegated. Yeah. By that time. Nothing to play for, which might free them up to get a win. Yeah. But I, and Oxford might be nervous, but I think Oxford, yeah, I, I think Oxford will come. That through. often nowadays, does it? That used to be like a guarantee. Once the side got relegated, that they suddenly start, you know, showing some form. But nowadays, most sides seem to go, oh, well, we lost. Hey ho. Five nil Oxford. I'm going to go three now. And um, 
a game which we will be attending, Robert. It seems to be a, 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 a little thing now that we go to the last game of the season. Accrington Stanley at home. I'm going to say we win that. I don't think we will, but what do you reckon the score will be? I reckon we'll win 2-1. I think we will draw 1-1 in that game. I have to say our video for that week will probably be a hell of a lot tenser than the one for last season, where we just basically <laughs> go, oh, well, it's a bit of a oh, like, well, last season. Uh, hey, what, what's Steve Seddon playing? He's not our player. Oh, wait, he is our player kind of thing. Okay, so I reckon we'll get 13 points. You are going to get 3, 6, 9, 10, 11, 3, 6, 9, 12, 13, 14. You've got 15. So you wow, have got... I really got 15 points. You've oh got my 15 God. points. I tell you what, that, it, 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 we've just taken one out of the last 30, and I think we're going to take 15 out of the next 30. Well, sadly, I'm more optimistic. No, that seems ridiculously optimistic. But, you know, you just feel like saying, we could... Things can change. Although, just as a look at it, England have been absolutely thrashed in the cricket here, by the way. Jeez, it's webbed. That's not to go in. But that, that's a bit off the cuff, but I don't think they really seem to care when it's not a World Cup, do they? But, um, look, um, so, let's just say then, all you miserable fuckers out there, why are you being so fucking miserable? It's clear that Oxford are going to stay up. We're not. It's not even going to be close. What's that going to be? give us, Robert? Like 50 points? Yeah, for easy, easy. Science. This is science, baby. This is easy. Science. What are you worried about? Liam Manning's here. Liam Manning's the man. Liam Manning is going to give us everything we've ever wanted. Championship in a couple of years. Premiership in four years. Champions League six years. And when Ian comes down for the last video. But secretly, he's actually coming down because he wants to watch the coronation the day before. But, you know, he's going to be sort of standing over there, proudly watching under our new king, Oxford United stay in the league. <laughs> On that note, thank you very much, Robert, for... Um, no problem. Thank you very much for joining me on this... Um, spiral into madness as I'm calling it as this Oxford United season reaches this last 10 games look we it desperately needs to turn around it desperately needs to improve we have obviously looked a little bit glass half full and thinking that it is your you could give your predictions and your thoughts down below I'd be fascinated to know what you're all going to think MK Don fans if you are watching this and wanting to know what your old boss is up to Please honestly give your opinion on Liam uh, on Manning and what you think of him. Not just MK Dons fans. What about that dodgy Belgian side? What about that New York City FC? <laughs> All those fans can jump in and chime Any in. Any Icelandic fans who want to pitch in, we're more than welcome. There we go. Um, as always, hit like. As always, hit subscribe. Um, and um, if you've got to this point in the video, well done. And um, yeah. You can you can go and do something more productive with your time now. Um, we're gonna we'll, I'll be back to do a review of Oxford United versus Morecambe. I'm already looking forward to it. Robert, say goodbye. Bye everyone. Bye for now.